One of my childhood homes had a balcony that was attached to both my mother's bedroom and mine via big glass doors in each of our rooms. Next to the balcony are two trees, one I often used to climb up and down from the balcony. One night, when my brother and mother weren't home and I was about 13, reading in bed with a very dim reading light, I heard what sounded like something moving in one of the trees outside, but this didn't worry me as possums and bats are common in our area. Now I had thin curtains on the glass doors that separated my room and the balcony, and the doors faced out towards the street where street lamp light was always visible through my curtains. Shortly after hearing the tree rustling noises, I see a shadow slowly move past the doors, at which point I immediately turn off my reading light and freeze like a deer in headlights. The shadow is tall, so it wasn't a neighbor kid and it wasn't my all of five foot mother. The person moved slowly, creeping as though they were trying to not be noticed. They wouldn't likely be able to see into my room, but I could see them thanks to the streetlights behind them. They moved past my doors out of sight, I sat there unable to move or even think about what to do other than be absolutely still. That is, until I heard another sound, the sound of someone trying to open a glass door, my mum's doors to the balcony. I didn't know if she had locked them or not but I wasn't taking chances. I moved as quickly and as silently as I could to my bedroom door and locked it. I listened for what the person was doing now, they were still jiggling the glass door handle, but it sounded like the doors weren't opening. I felt relief, this person couldn't get in surely, all I had to do was wait for them to realize that and then they would leave right. Well, I heard light footsteps move back along the balcony to my set of glass doors. Until I saw his shadow stop directly in front of them. Again, I froze, I found myself praying, he couldn't see me, he couldn't know I can see him right. I saw a shadow of a hand reach up to my door's handle and my heart stopped, had I actually locked those doors myself today. I was out there earlier, what if I forgot? The seconds leading up to him grabbing the handle felt like an eternity. But thankfully, when this person tried to open the door, it did not open, it was locked. I sighed such a sigh of relief I was worried he had heard it. After this he began pacing the length of the balcony. I didn't have a mobile, and the landline was at the other end of the house, but I was scared to take my eyes off of them. I was silently crying, and praying they would just leave. Then I heard him stop moving, he then said, I can just break the glass you know. Before I could even process this, I saw car headlights turn around the corner of my street and then stop at our property gate. My mum was home. The person on balcony moved out of sight, and I heard a loud thump as they jumped off of it. When my mum came inside, I was hysterical and was barely coherent in telling her what happened. Eventually, I got the message across and she called the police. They never found or caught anyone, but a neighbor reported a truck in the street that matched the description of a truck that had been reported recently for attempted child abductions near my school a block away. My best friend in high school lived in an old plantation-type house, and we would always hang out there during the summer since both of her parents worked, and we would have the house to ourselves. There was a wide front door, that opened into a hall with doors leading to the living room, the kitchen, and bedrooms, as well as a really wide staircase. All of the doors always stayed closed off in the summer, to help with cooling that big house. One day, when we are both about 14, we were there alone, and in the back of the house in the kitchen, making lunch. The radio is on, and we had been outside tanning, and are only wearing swimsuits with t-shirts. We heard what sounded like somebody walking up and down the front porch, so I go to the living room and look out the window but didn't see anything. I open the door to the hall, and stand at the front door, looking out. I still don't see anything. I heard somebody say, hey. And I turn around, and there is the biggest man I have ever seen standing about halfway up the staircase. I just froze. I couldn't move or speak. About that time, my friend reaches out from the living room, and pulls me back in and slams the door. We ran through the kitchen, and out the back door to a neighbor's house. 
The neighbor goes and runs the man off, but not before the man tells him that he thought it was a boarding house, and he was looking for a room to rent. After that, we were both a little OCD about checking that the front door was locked. About a week after that happened, we saw the man's mugshot in our local paper after he had been arrested for raping a young girl not too far up the street. Many years later, after my friend and her family had moved from that house, the city condemned it, and tore it down. When they did, they found two skeletons behind a wall that had been there since the 20s. Come to find out, it had been a boarding house many years ago, and they think the lady who ran it may have knocked off a couple of salesmen or something. When I was 17, I had a boyfriend who was in the army. We didn't live on base, but in a tiny neighboring town nearby. He had some beef with a skinhead gang who had some members that were also in the army. One night, while we were sleeping, they knocked on our door. It was about 2 a.m., and we had no peephole or window near the door, so I opened it with the chain on. As soon as I did, five guys rushed the door and broke the chain. They all had baseball bats. The lights in the living room only stayed on for about 10 seconds, because they began smashing my lamps, the overhead light on the fan, and then the kitchen and bedroom lights with their bats. I've never almost pissed my pants until then. I was so scared, my legs turned to rubber. Strangely, after they broke the chain, but before they smashed the lights, my vision got really dark. Like the lights were dimming down. This was the first time it ever happened, but to this day, if something startles me, my vision goes almost black before snapping back to normal. So these guys grab my boyfriend and are holding him down on the couch. Two guys holding him down, while the others take swings at his torso with their bats. I have no clue what to do, so I try to tackle them by taking a running jump. It's not really effective. I'm 17 and short, and these guys are like 25 and huge. My feet are bloody and cut up from running through broken glass, and I'm only wearing a t-shirt and undies. We had one phone in that house and it was in the bedroom, and I somehow felt like these guys weren't going to let me get at it. So I ran out of the house, no shoes, bloody feet, glass digging in deeper every step, and looked for the town's only cop. This is Nolanville, Texas, population 2000. I ended up at the post office, a few blocks over. There's a payphone, so I try calling 911. It rang, and I was immediately put on hold. While I was waiting, the cop found me. He handcuffed me and put me in the cruiser because I didn't have any pants on. I tried to explain that my house had been broken into and my boyfriend was being assaulted, but the cop insisted on running my SS hashtag to make sure everything added up. While I was in the back of the police car, I see the five guys drive past us in a pickup truck. After everything checked out okay with my record, the cop drove me home, blowing off my break-in story. My door was wide open, only the porch light lit. My boyfriend was still on the couch, curled up in a ball. He declined to go to the hospital and we found out later he had two broken ribs. The cop called a backup unit from another neighboring town and then urged us to name the attackers, but my boyfriend wouldn't. We've never been fond of local law enforcement. Not much ever came of it, except I have a little PTSD from it, and we bought a shotgun to keep beside the front door. My dad left for a few months for a job in another country. So it was just my mom, my little sis, who was a baby, and me, five at the time. I remember this vividly. My mom hated staying home without my dad. Said she didn't feel safe. The house itself was very secure. It was fully fenced and had two entrances, the kitchen and front entrance. Each entrance had two doors internal door solid wood, and external door solid iron. All of the windows in the house were plantation style shutters. They open and close when you turn the little knob thingy. These were made out of some sort of steel and iron combo. I would sleep with my mom in her bed and my little sis in the same room in her crib. 
My mom used to lock the door and push a dresser up against it. She was very paranoid. The night my dad left, we started to hear crinkling of leaves. We had large trees in the backyard and piles of leaves on the ground. My mom let out a scream and thought that it would scare whoever it was off. It didn't. We kept hearing the crinkling and mom kept screaming. The phone was in the living room, early 90s so no cell phones. The house on the left was too far from us to hear her screams. The one on the right was an old couple who couldn't do anything for us. During this time in my country, you had to wait until morning to call the police station. And even then, these people didn't have a phone. We were trapped. I remember the absolute terror I felt. My teeth were chattering so bad I was worried they were going to crack right out of my skull. My mom tells me that was something that has always stayed with her, the sound of my teeth clacking. At one point, she opens the shutters a little to try to see if the person is still there. The light in the bedroom was on, a beam of light shines across this person's eyes, she recognized him immediately. It was one of my dad's acquaintances. She knew it was him because he has very distinct eyes, bright green and cat-like. She loses it and grabs a shoe, and throws it really hard at the window, in the area where she saw him. This was a clogged type shoe against steel shutters. I cannot accurately describe how loud and jarring the sound was. This was the longest night of my life. It went on for hours. This dude fumbling around in the dark trying to get into our house. My mom's guttural screams for help. We waited him out till dawn. My little sis actually went into shock, she was a really cranky baby who would cry at the slightest provocation. She did not cry once the whole night. I remember looking over at her as this was happening, and her standing in her crib, all big watery eyes and silent. The next morning my mom says fuck this, and starts packing up all of our stuff. She says we're going to move in with grandma until my dad comes back. On our way there, we take the bus because my mom doesn't have a license. Guess who's on the bus, the creeper. He just looked at her and smiled. Didn't say hello or anything just smiled with a weird glint in his eye. To this day my mom swears that this dude thought he was gonna get another chance, possibly the following night, but mom noped us the fuck out of there. She was worried that he was going to figure it out because we had luggage with us. He didn't. He didn't even know where my grandma lived. Years later, when I talked to my mom about it she told me point blank had he gotten into the house, he was gonna rape all of us. She says this dude used to look at me a lot when I rode my bike in the neighborhood. He also eyed her and my baby sister. When I was 8 years old, we lived out in a farmhouse in an orchard. The nearest town was about 10 minutes away, and my dad was working far enough away, that he stayed away during the week. One morning, I heard my mom yelling, and I thought I had missed the bus so I got out of bed, but saw a naked man hitting her and trying to grab her. He was out in a bender and had just walked to the nearest lights and broken in. Our dog was barking and nipping at him, but she wasn't a trained attack dog or anything. I ran back into my room, and grabbed a little .22 bolt action, that my dad had given me in the ammo, he made me keep separate and loaded it. It seemed like it took forever to load those five shots. I ran outside following the dog barking, and saw him dragging my mom by her hair. I remember trying to be steady like I had been taught, but I just fired over and over again. I didn't know it at the time but three of the five hit him, and he was later found by the police, after someone dropped him anonymously at a hospital about an hour away, with one of the bullets lodged in his lung. At that age, I had a hard time processing it, mainly because the state mandated I see a counselor and she kept insinuating that, I should feel all kinds of emotions I wasn't, which made me feel like there was something wrong with me. In the end, I just feel lucky that I was brought up by parents who trusted me, and spent time teaching me never to panic. <laughs>